Am I wrong for telling my daughter she cannot introduce her African American boyfriend to her grandparents? <sighs> this is already, I already smell the racism from this post. Let me preface this by saying I have absolutely no problem with interracial relationships. Now that the air is clear, let me continue. But the fact that your parents do, it's the same thing. My daughter Anna has recently started to date an African American man, Jamal. While I'm not exactly what you would refer to as a liberal, he's a nice young man and as long as my daughter is happy, I'm happy. The problem is, Anna is rather naive about the community she lives in. While her friends are quite content to see a relationship like hers, more than a few tongues are wagging in the community and a few people have privately expressed their concern to me. Okay, so you live in a prestigious white neighborhood and so people are freaking out that your white daughter is dating a black man. As I've said, I have no problem with mixed relationships and I've set them straight, but I am painfully aware of how these matters are viewed by certain segments of the population. Stop trying to sugarcoat it. You live in a racist neighborhood. My parents are coming to stay with us for a week and Anna expressed a desire to introduce Jamal to them now that things are getting much more serious between them. I told her on no uncertain terms that this wasn't going to happen. I may have no problem with Jamal, but they absolutely will. And even when the relationship ends, they won't forget it. What do you mean when the relationship ends? You're already forecasting that she's going to break up with him? Like, that's not cool. You make it sound like it's just a fling. They might even go as far as to cut her off entirely. Anna was extremely upset by this and implied I was a racist and more concerned with what my parents think than how she feels. As I said, I know my parents. They simply aren't okay with mixed relationships and if Anna were to bring Jamal over, even as a friend, they would be furious both at her and me. Anna is currently staying with Jamal and doesn't want to speak with me right now. My wife stands by me given she knows very well how my parents are. They had a problem with her for months over the length of the skirt she wore when I introduced her to them for Christ's sake. But a close friend I confided in told me that I have behaved like an ass and that I need to focus more on my daughter than pleasing my parents. No advice needed, but I have to know, have I been an ass? <sighs> Our parents, especially at that age, they know what they know and they don't ever want to change their way of thinking. Very rarely will you be able to convince an old person something that they don't want to believe. Am I wrong for telling my sister-in-law no one cares that she's pregnant? See, this is one of those posts where it's like, duh, you're the asshole. But then when I read it, it's like, oh, never mind. Watch. Backstory, my cousin, 33 female, who I'll call Mary, lost her husband, 32 male, and two of her three children, three female and nine-month-old male, in a car accident last week. Her and her daughter, five, are as you would expect, and it's just heartbreaking. Well, today was a funeral, and my brother's wife announced her pregnancy the second they arrived at our house this morning, and we were like, okay, congratulations, but please keep it on the down low for today. Well, when we arrived at the church, she kept making gagging sounds and rubbing her stomach saying, I as a mom can't imagine what she's going through. They have no kids, so people would look at her and she'd tell them she was pregnant. Afterwards, at my aunt's house, my sister-in-law kept making everything about her. Like someone was in the bathroom and my sister-in-law would loudly say, pregnant lady needs to pee. She literally told my cousin to give her her seat so the lady with the baby could rest her feet. I ignored her until she came to Mary, stuck out her flat belly and said, me and Isaac just found out I was pregnant and honestly, we are beside ourselves. It could happen to us. Mary broke down crying. I snapped. Who says that to a woman who just literally lost two babies? I said loudly to my sister-in-law, no one gives an F you're pregnant. Look around. It's not just one, but two babies funerals, not to mention the love of Mary's life. Like I knew you were an attention seeker, but for fuck's sake you took the test four days ago just leave good for you she did leave in tears and my brother called me a fat bitter bitch oh what the fuck uh-uh i've gotten phone calls from my brother and my sister-in-law's family calling me the world of names because i made a pregnant woman cry mary and my aunt thank me but if i'm being honest i feel bad about causing a scene so please put me in my place if i'm wrong her husband your brother should have pulled her aside and be like yo what the fuck are you doing shut the fuck up but if he don't do it you can do it so little update i found out this morning that my brother and my sister-in-law harassed my cousin with phone calls for her to talk to me about yesterday my aunt gave both of them an earful and then made my cousin turn off her phone my brother and my sister-in-law were at my parents house trying to get their side in when i arrived they both came at me screaming and yelling about my sister-in-law's feelings and she couldn't miscarry from the stress i caused her sister-in-law said if i didn't lose my attitude and apologize i'd never be in their child's life Oh, uh-uh, brother, step up. Step up, brother. I told her I didn't care, and if she was going to use the kid as a weapon, I didn't want to be in their life anyway. Things got heated, and my father ended up kicking out my brother and my sister-in-law. So yeah, all this trauma at a time, we should be there for one another. I'm so sorry you have to go through that, but your, your sister-in-law's fucking psycho. Your brother's whipped too. I just found out that I've been dating my biological brother... For six years. No! <laughs> no. 
Did I, everyone got that, right? Bio brother, six years. Okay, good. I am 30 and my brother is 32. I'm going to call him my boyfriend for the majority no, of the time. No, absolutely not. While I type this. <laughs> I feel weird about this. I was adopted as Fair. a baby, but I didn't know that I was adopted until I was in high school. I don't feel betrayed or care much. I love my parents and my parents love me. Who cares if they aren't my real parents? My boyfriend was also adopted. And when we met, it was one of the first things we sort of bonded over. We both didn't learn we were adopted until later on, and we both were lucky and had good families. We weren't passed around from foster home to foster home. Our relationship was and still is great. We understood each other very fast. We were attracted to each other quickly. I've never met someone and felt immediate attraction and familiarity. Now, I know that that comfort and familiarity is because he's my brother. <sighs> Not my half brother, my full brother. We've done everything a couple that has been together for six years could do. Please. We said we love each other, we've had sex, we've celebrated anniversaries, we've met each other's families, I'm just glad we both agreed early on that we don't want to have kids. So that has never happened. I don't want to deal with the health risks to raise a child and them know that their parents are siblings. I discovered it when we did a DNA test thing to see our ancestry and <laughs> what exactly we are. I ordered two for us. We spit in the tube and sent it out. Just cute couple things. <laughs> yeah. It took like a month for the results to come back and I was excited to see what we were, but before I could even get to that, I saw that we were siblings. I was shocked, to say the least. I only just found out this information and I haven't told my boyfriend. <laughs> I'm really hoping they made a mistake, but things are kind of starting to make sense to me now. We always get the quote, you guys look so alike. No! <laughs> or, Quote, he's the male version of you. No! Oh, my God. <laughs> no. So bad. Long no. before this test, we've always gotten compared. We always just laughed it off, but I have spent the morning looking at pictures of us together and realizing what we really are. We do look so alike. It's freaking me out, and I don't know what I should do. I still love my boyfriend slash brother. <laughs> And we have been together for six years. We have a house together and a whole comfortable life. I'm hoping that this test is wrong and we will do a real test soon, but I'm panicking. I still see him as the love of my life. Okay, but this is actually so crazy because what if you just found out that Justin is your brother? Like, you can't just unlove him like in a second. Do you know what Luckily, I mean? Luckily, I can see his mom sitting right over here. <laughs> Yes. So I know that that's not the case. And <laughs> Dad, <laughs> Jerry, where are you? You were at the hospital. Are we, are we safe? Do you know what I mean, though? It's like, how do you just find that out and then just unlove them? You, like, six years? No, that's so much history. Am I wrong for kicking my husband out of the delivery room after he started crying? My husband, Kevin, male 31, and I, female 27, welcomed our first baby a week ago. Kevin is the type of person that gets stressed out easily and reacts to events negatively. We've had conversation about his ability to handle being in the delivery room. I said if he couldn't be there, it was fine, seeing how he reacts under pressure and can have mom there instead. He said he could 100% handle anything and promised to be supportive and positive. I went into labor alone. He met me at the hospital, and when he entered the room, he looked so stressed out and overwhelmed already. He started moving around periodically, completely ignoring me. He got more visibly stressed when my pain got intense. He took my hand when I started having contractions and kept clutching it, almost stopping blood circulation. My entire arm went numb. I felt strained and although I was in intense pain, I saw his face. It was so red and there was a visible vein in his forehead that looked like it was ready to blow up. It was not helpful at all in fact. It was frustrating and affected my emotions negatively. But still, I was willing to suck it up then suddenly he started crying. Like literally sobbing really loud. I found myself screaming, telling him to stop several times and as a result, he literally yelled back in my ear. The nurse got involved. I told her to get him out of here. He tried to argue with me but wasn't given a chance and was pressured to leave the room. I didn't see him afterwards after our daughter was born and while I was 
was resting, he didn't show up. His mom kept calling to see where he was. She stayed with me and I haven't seen him till the day I was discharged. We had a big fight at home. He kept lashing out when I said how bad it was for him to ghost me when I needed him the most. He said I shouldn't expect him to stick around after cruelly and selfishly kicking him out of the room and robbed him an opportunity to see our daughter's first breath. I explained he was causing me to panic with how he was crying, but he accused me of making up excuses after I was purely at fault for kicking him out and getting the staff to gang up on him no matter how hard I tried to spin it. He said as a dad, he should have the liberty to be in the room no matter how he behaves and whether I like it or not. I got tired of arguing and I told him to stop and he said he will, but he will never forget what I've cost him that day and walked out. I was so mad and took time to cool off. Then when I unpacked my bag, I found a small box that contained a necklace with our daughter's name. I felt awful knowing Kevin left it for me to wear at the hospital, but the argument happened and he spent the entire time in the car in the hospital's parking lot. 